Canadian Ore Bodies is a Canadian-based mineral exploration company with a portfolio of properties in Ontario and Nunavut. The company is focused on generating shareholder value through the advancement of its two Hemlo area projects, Wire Lake and the North Limb. Canadian Ore Bodies Inc. trades on the TSX Venture under the ticker symbol C-O-R-E. Hello everyone, welcome to Midas Letter Live. Joining me today, Gord McKinnon. Gord McKinnon is the CEO of Canadian Ore Bodies, ticker C-O-R-E, aptly named. Appropriate. <laughs> Very appropriate. And uh, Gord, uh, you, you, uh, there's a bit of history in the mining business in your family. I think I'd like to point out that your father founded the famous Hemlo Gold Mine, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. My, my father was a very influential person in the, the mining space. Sure. Uh, uh, Hemlo was one of his biggest claims to fame, um, which at the time was the largest gold discovery in, in Canada. Uh, it's produced well over uh, 20 million ounces and it's uh, wow. Barrick's only Canadian asset and, and it's still continuing on. Wow, wow. So, so, so you have this company, uh, and I understand you have a very sizable land position. Yes, yeah, we're, so we ended up going back into the Hemlo camp. Uh, so is that, that's where you are? Yeah. Isn't that, would you, you'd call it a camp? Yeah, so okay. we're, we're back in the Hemlo district, uh, you know, made famous by my father. Uh, there was a little bit of hesitation to do this, but I was encouraged by some of our large shareholders uh, uh, to, to, to get back in here, because obviously trying to follow up on what my father did it would be, <laughs> is, a, is a tough uh, uh, shoe to fill, so. so. Is it something like uh, they say, if you want to find gold, go where gold has been found before? Yeah, the shadow of a head frame saying always come, comes out, right? And, uh, and Hemlo is very unique. Um, you know, typically in a greenstone belt that has a mine that produces over 20 million ounces, there's always other discoveries that are made. And Hemlo is like this anomaly that uh, there's been nothing else found besides the original discovery. Right. Um, but we believe that it's just for a lack of, uh, of uh, you know, like exploration. You need, you know, more companies needed to go back and take a harder look. It, it, it got this reputation that, it, you know, it, it is an anomaly and there's nothing else, you know, you know, really in that camp. But, you know, we're coming back here to, to show otherwise. And it wasn't our intention to be the largest uh, landholder in the Hemlo camp. But uh, now we are. We have a well in excess of 30,000 hectares. Yeah, that's, and, a, that's a big land position. Yeah. So, so so okay so you've got this land now tell me uh, I, I think you told me there's roughly 50 55 million shares yep uh, fully diluted your stocks trading around 30 cents so your market cap 16 17 million yeah yet. yeah which mm -hmm. is you know like there's some a lot of these things out there that are trading three or four million but uh, you've got some pretty impre uh, impressive list of major shareholders yeah, we're, we're fortunate for a company of our size to have, a, a, you know, a, a roster of shareholders that we do. We have, uh, you know, less than 10 people that control over 75% of our, our stock. So the stock doesn't trade that well, but it's also, it also primes us for a discovery. Like when, if we have a, you know, another major hit, like you, there's no stock for sale. So, so, you know, you, you get to see these things move pretty, pretty you, quickly. You can, you can sort of uh, yeah. blow on it and it'll move, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, 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 I, but you, but you have to, now, so so so, uh, so how many major shareholders do you have? Like, would you say three, four? Well, so just like with management um, uh, alone, that's that's over seventeen percent uh, uh, interest there. Right. Then we have Rob Cudney uh, from Northfield Capital, uh, very famous, very sold, famous guy. S it's sold his Gold Eagle mine for one point five billion, um, and he's our largest shareholder. Uh, then we also have groups like Cisco Mining as uh, you know twelve percent shareholder. So that's Sean Sean Rusin, I guess. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, and then you know guys like Rob McEwen, Rick Rule. Rob uh, McEwen. Rob yeah. McEwen. Rob Rob McEwen's on, uh, his name's all over hospitals in uh, yeah in, uh, in in Toronto. Yeah, so so like I say, you know, we're for a company of our size, uh, we've attracted quite the the roster. Yeah, the you roster. sort of put together the A team. Yes, in terms yeah, no, of to, for, on in terms of shareholders and right. in terms of our our management and and the uh, the project uh, evaluation team as well. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Now you done you did some drilling last year. Yeah, so we, we went back uh, to uh, the historic Super G, which was known as a, uh, you know, a narrow high grade uh, uh, vein system. Um, but it was always looked at as just this one little narrow high grade vein. So what we went back here in our last program, we put a, a, just a few holes in there. 
Um, we were able to show that this now looks like a green, host, a green stone hosted gold vein system. So it's not just the one high grade vein, we're looking at multiple veins and we hit multiple veins in the drilling that we did there. We have the Marks vein, the Discovery vein and the Super G vein and in the drilling that we did last year we were able to extend mineralization by 25 meters down plunge and the widths got better and the grades got so there's better. A, there's, there's a map there, I mean, yeah. and it's, it's over here as well. So. Yeah, so, so we were able to hit 133 you know, grams per ton over two meters, but that also included uh, you know, 0.6 of 443 grams per ton. But so, it's a gold. Yes, yeah, so some pretty spectacular yeah, stuff. Yeah. And so, so now we're going to follow up on that. That's correct. So what we're, what we're looking at doing here now, so with and the success... When, and when will that, sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but, but mm -hmm. when will you start drilling that? So we're looking to follow up on this starting next week. Um, uh, drilling what we've so been... It's very targeted then. Yes, it is. And, and what we've done over the last month is we've been up there building ice pads on Smoke Lake uh, to because like, ultimately the best angles to target this thing are off the lake. And this has never been done before in this camp on this target. And so that's what we're going to be doing sure, here this sure. year starting next week. Uh, we're also going to be drilling holes off the land, but uh, uh, several of the targets or the targeting techniques that we need to do, we need to do that off the lake. You know, so we, we, we cover a lot of marijuana companies in this show and uh, Smoke Lake would be a nice, uh, <laughs> nice uh, tie-in. Anyway, so okay, so drilling is going to start. Uh, yeah, so, so news, will, news will be coming here, um, you know, we'll be drilling starting next week, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, we should be wrapped up by early March, uh, and then it'll just be waiting and for the assays how, how, maybe three weeks, four weeks after that. How deep will you go? Uh, we're not going to be going too deep here, uh, it's just... W so w you, you know, obviously the closer you find it to surface, yeah. the more economic it becomes. That's correct, but uh, with, with grades of over 400 grams per ton, it, you know, it, that, that's something that... Uh, so is this, is this a great bear look-alike, would you say? It's like it has characteristics to Great Bear. Uh, I would say a better analogy may be Amex. Um, you know, and, and that's a story that's getting a lot of love. Uh, you oh, know, I, I listen. We I, yeah. I bumped into Victor Cantori uh, about a month and a half ago, and yeah. he uh, he said this is hot off the press. Yeah. that it looks like they've, they're onto something. Yeah, and and, the, and, and the stock was twenty cents. Today it hit ninety five. And, and and you know that's a prime example of just like you know we're. We're fortunate to have the shareholder base we have, but we don't have a retail following, really. Well, and, maybe you know, we can help you change that. Yeah, well, I would hope, I would hope getting uh, our, our name out here and, yeah. uh, and with the, the, the upcoming drilling and, and results, we'll, we'll hopefully uh, you know, provide that and get, get it out to a wider audience because you know, you know, at the market cap that we're at, and we see these other companies that are putting out what, almost... Great Bear is what? Uh, is it a $150 million market yeah, cap right is, now? Yeah, it no, is. Uh, so, so, and, so, and again, you know, just you yeah. know, high grade, wow. you know, narrow intercepts. But they, they, they also have some wider stuff. But you know, the Amex story is, is is very good because they have the the narrow high grade, and then they also have this low grade system. Because besides Smoke Lake, we also have Wire Lake, which is over three kilometers already historically. It's got a hundred holes in there, um, but it's lower grade mineralization. But the mineralization is consistent over that entire three kilometer strike length. And what we're actually trying to do here with Smoke Lake and Wire Lake tie it in. Yeah, is that we're three through geochemistry right now, we're trying to get a signature on both of those and show that they're part of the same system. And if that is, if that's the case, which we believe it is, that would extend our our the the, the system over five kilometers, and then also show that that high grade is possible all along that five kilometers. We just need to figure out how to target it. Right. Um, so so that without what, spending a lot of money. Exactly. So yeah. that's what we're doing with the, all this geochemistry work here right now. Uh, is is trying to show that, and then trying to figure out how we're going to be able to hone in on and target that high grade along that trend. Yeah, well, you're, you're, you're obviously very enthusiastic and, and, you know... Well, we're very excited about what we have and we, you know, yeah. we, we, we want, we want uh, you know, we want to bring other people into the story because yeah. we just believe it's, it's, it's very cheap, we're well-funded, we don't need to go back yeah, to the you, market. And, and, you know, the enemy of, of, of a shareholder is dilution, right? Exactly, yes. So, so you've obviously been a good steward and that you've kept the dilution down. Yeah, we're tr we we try to do that, yeah. and you know, finance at, yeah. at you know at, at highs if possible, and sure. uh, we we've always been fortunate to you know to have a, a, you know a continual backing and, and always being able to raise money. So we've never been you know one of the we never let the the company try to get down too low in the treasury. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you know I I I've, I've looked at a lot of things over the years. I'm 40 years basically <laughs> in this business. I have an accounting background. I've made a lot of mistakes. Uh, you know, there's a checklist that I sort of have sure. that, that before I'm getting involved in anything, like yeah. I'm not going to, and again, I'm not judging. I'm just saying for me, I want to see good structure. 
I want to see good shareholders. Yep. And, uh, and, and I think and, we tick and, those boxes. And, and, and yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and land in the right jurisdiction. Yeah, which, no, like the, the camp yeah. we're in, like the Hemlo camp is infamous for, you no, know, for, for, no, for no, Hemlo no. as well. So, and, so and, and that's what I also believe is, is and you know, why we were able to attract the group of people right. that we did. It's because it's prime for discovery. You know, if, if there is a major discovery here, if we're able to be successful in this, this next round of drilling uh, and, uh, you know, continue on what we, what we found in, yes. uh, from the drilling last year, you know, I, I believe that, uh, you know, we'd be lighting a wick for, you know, for, for, for a big boom here. So let, let me uh, just w one other, uh, maybe a couple of questions here and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll wrap it up. But so when do you think you'll get some results from this drilling program? Will we be towards a April 1st? Uh, yeah. We don't, want any, I, we don't want any April Fool's <laughs> jokes. No, no, no. We won't, we won't be looking for April Fool's, but uh, I would imagine by the end of March, or early April, we should have, uh, we should have results. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 good. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so, anything so else it, you want to add? Uh, no, the, you know, the, the news flow here is going to, so it's not, you know, we're not a story where, you know, people are going to be jumping in here and, and, you know, there's, there's going to be no information coming for a while. We're going to be drilling next week. We're going to have those results and then yeah. we're going to be right into our summer expiration, which is going to, which is our busiest time. So, so, you know, Great. the news, the news flow is going to be consistent. Yeah. I, uh, uh, I wish I wasn't getting so old because it's it, I forget things. <laughs> anyway, look, it, it was great having you here, Gordon. Yeah. We're going to have you again yeah. to keep us posted. No, definitely. I'd uh, love to come back. Yeah, with yeah for the, sure, for sure. And this, uh, w you know, we're, we're going to probably uh, uh, we'll keep in touch and we'll see what happens. All right, I appreciate that. Okay? Thank you, Ed. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for coming by.